Yeah, my name is Jeff O'Neill. I'm the founder of Zephyr Aerospace. Uh, Zephyr designs and manufactures high-density, lie-flat seating for any type of transport, cars, trains, and also airplanes. The reason why this product is so cool and why I'm so excited to be here is that it's a huge consumer win. Everyone in the world flies by plane. And at some point, when you prefer a nonstop flight, you would love to have the option to sleep. It doesn't exist. So my goal is to make in-flight sleep more affordable. I like the sort of free-willed nature of the show. It seemed to be something that anyone with any idea, however crazy enough, could actually pitch and become credible. Based on my research, what I've done in the past, I think my product is really primed for this type of activation. I want to get customers attracted to it so they can help me convince airlines this is a product which they should buy. Uh, welcome to Meet the Drapers. Give us your pitch. Thank you very much. My name is Jeff. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Zephyr Aerospace. We're solving the problem of improving transportation for 80% of all global travelers. One imagine the year 1960, when the Pan Am Clipper traveled between the East Coast and to Europe. It was a wonderful experience. This was actually a picture of economy class. How pleasant everyone, how happy everybody is. Fast forward 60 years, it's become a miserable experience. <laughs> Tighter seats, no meals, everything a la carte. 80% of all travelers in the world travel like this. Bigger, now. Get them bigger, they are too small. In two more years, airlines will be having you standing up on some seats on flights under four hours. Uh, come on. That's true, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> That's true. We have a solution. The Zephyr seat offers every economy class customer who's willing to pay an upgrade a lie flat seat in a high density configuration, very similar to a bunk bed. Passengers board the plane as they would on any normal flight, in a premium economy class section, and they can choose a lower bunk or an upper bunk, both of which can be accessed by a telescopic ladder. The entire seat is only 6.5 feet off the ground, but affords a perfect upright position for taxi takeoff, landing, eating, and a lie flat mode when the customer wants to sleep. We're solving the problem of making in-flight sleep more affordable for 80% of every single person who travels. This is a rendering of what the center section would look like on board an airframe and the seats would look very similar to what you see on an aircraft now. So this is how much space is given for premium economy class customers. Airlines charge two times the price for an upgrade from economy to premium economy. This seat replaces the premium economy seat on board the airframe now, but offers everyone a bed with exactly the same density. And this is a foam mock-up that we built. Oh. We built a full version of this. You have to imagine that the same seat is on the top level. Oh, let's, let's go in. So Here, I'll come in. Can I sit and without breaking it? I'll show you how it works. I, I so get this it. Is you your go in here. Taxi and takeoff position. And it should be okay, perfect. Good. Clear even for you. Yeah, so this, this is, is good because I'm pretty tall. What do I do here? So go all the way down. Keep going. You've got more room. Okay. So. Pretty good. Wow. So yeah, I'm very comfortable. Nice. I can definitely do this. Okay, you guys carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How much so headspace do they the have? The exact same. It's basically an exact replica of the lower bunk just above, you have to imagine. Okay, and then what happens to the um, overhead bins? So the overhead bins are still there. You can see them. They're on the, they're on the outboard part, and that provides uh, storage for those passengers. And underneath here, we have a locker that will open up, and you can put a soft uh, carry-on bag here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Boeing... Have you talked to either Airbus or Boeing? We have, actually. Um, Boeing has a startup group called Horizon X, and they're interested in exploring this concept where we can get an airline partner. So we're also in discussions with about 10 airlines right now. What is the reaction that Boeing has? Boeing is, a, is an OEM, so they produce aircraft. So to the yeah. extent that, that seats can help them sell more airplanes, they're very interested. And a lot of the airlines that we're talking to exclusively use Boeing aircraft. So you will sell to the airlines? We will. The airline is the customer. And what's to keep them from just doing this? Design themselves or after something. copying. Um, the airline industry is the only industry that's actually negatively innovated in the past 60 years. The best thing about this seat is there's no moving parts. So a traditional business class seat is very heavy. It weighs over 350 pounds, and it's very high maintenance. This is not a seat that converts to a bed. It gives you two different environments. So you have an upright position for taxiing, takeoff, eating, working, watching a movie, and then you have a lie flat environment. The, all the direct maintenance costs are reduced by about 85%. Um, so one unit of these we're estimating we can build and sell with a sizable margin for $10,000. So two levels. And what are they about. paying now for a seat? For, this is replacing a premium economy class seat. It's about seven to $10,000, depending on the actual quality. But a business class seat, nobody knows this, but can cost over $200,000 for one seat. So have you? They pay to Boeing. Well, they pay to the air, airlines, the, to the seat manufacturers. There's only about four of them in the world. 
And then Ooh, those, are you those, at their mercy? Are you going to do your own seat manufacturer? Uh, we have a partner right now that's helping us do some of the engineering for this. Are they one of the four? They're one of the four, yeah. I'm wondering whether you've thought through the business model the best way you can because you're at the mercy of the guy who manufactures it. You're at the mercy of the airline. You have no connection with the end user. Commercial aviation is one avenue for this product. We're looking at trains. I've met with Amtrak as well. We're also looking at bus companies in Europe, China, and the U.S. Commercial aviation is the lowest hanging fruit, but it has the most impact. Now, you have somebody trapped in there for 10 hours. Why aren't you selling them something? That's an opportunity for airlines to ancillarize every other part of this seat. I believe it's a hardware problem, not a software problem. Price I'm already sold on the design. I think it's a great idea. I think you, you're going for the right thing. I am not sold on your business model. You sell these things to airlines. First of all, they have only a few customers. They can turn the screws on you, and you only have, at most, four suppliers who can deliver this to you. That is the kind of business that gets squeezed. You need somehow to get to the end user. I think the problem you've got is the minute this has any success, Boeing is going to be there uh, selling the same customer you're trying to reach, and they've got the leverage. There are a lot of smaller shops that, that also produce seats. They just don't have a lot of airline customers. Our goal here is that actually the, probably the best benefit for the airline industry is once one airline buys it, they all buy it. The entire industry for seats, for airline, for commercial airlines is about 2.5 to $3 billion. And of that premium economy class seating is about 20 to 25% of it. What's your background? So I've always been in the travel space. I've been a champion for those that want, always want a free upgrade. I've helped people travel farther and longer for less money. So I used to build pricing algorithms that help airlines price different products. So, hmm. And I travel 345 days a year, so I li pretty much live on a plane. So this is a, a kind of a thought process that said, well, why can't airlines design a piece of hardware that people actually want to pay for? The problem with business class seats are you get the bed and all the other stuff around it that nobody cares about, but they can't separate that from the main amenity. Customers want to sleep. That's all they want to do. And we realize there's an inflection point. About 10 hours is when people actually begin to consider an investment in their personal comfort. And this product is directly oriented to serve that niche. Um, what yeah. about the people that can't get up to the top bunk? Because there are a lot of those. There are. ADA compliance is 50%. So because we have a lower bunk and an upper bunk, we are definitely in compliance. There are obvious and logical trade-offs, right? If you want a business class light seat, you're going to have to make trade-offs. And one of the trade-offs is if you're afraid of heights, it's not the perfect product for you. Yeah. But the airlines don't want to intentionally cannibalize all their premium products. It's meant to be the best option you have now. Good. Terrific. Well, great. Yeah. Thanks for coming to Thank meet you. the Drapers. Thanks so much. Good. It was a great experience to be live. I think the pitch went pretty well. There were some questions we didn't have full time to, for me to answer, but he loved the product, got inside of it, said he would be a customer, thought it was very comfortable, so that's good. They thought the market was very small and there were only a few people who were participating in the manufacturing space, so that limits my options to shop around. But I tried to tell them what's more of an airline pitch and the airlines will ultimately be the customers and the, and the buyers of it, but that it's really gonna be dependent on how quickly I can gain traction there. I want to tell people that if you're unhappy with the current state of how you travel in economy class, please help me support this innovation and tell airlines that with only incremental investment and a little bit of risk, they can really improve the experience for a lot of people. So what did everybody think of Zephyr seat? Uh, but let's ask our judges. What, what did you think, Preet? So design's amazing. I think, you know, absolutely flying coach is not the most fun experience. <laughs> so I think from that perspective, it's it's clever, it's interesting, um, and it would be extremely helpful to, um, to travelers. Um, I think there's a lot of challenges. Finding actually who's going to be the person that's going to say, yes, I'm going to pay for this, I'm going to buy it. I'm actually also concerned in terms of liability for just what airlines have to carry by having a ladder. You know, especially if this is international, people end up having alcohol. Like, you know, I don't know. There's just yeah, so many the, scenarios. The top story is, is my the concern story is about it. Yeah. yeah. My point of view is this might be a terrific design. The minute that is discovered by the customers, the airlines. Yeah. Boeing and uh, the other big they're all gonna manufacturers are going to have it much cheaper and they're going to flatten you out. I, I, I would never invest in this. My point of view is somewhat <laughs> like that. 
That's why I kept pushing for a new business model. I think he's going to be squeezed between the people who make the seeds, the seeds don't have to. and the airlines. He's got a supplier and a customer who are going to slowly squeeze together. The customer will keep asking for a lower price and the supplier will keep asking for more money. What I said is you've got somebody sitting in your seat for 10 hours. You should be able to do something with that person in that seat. You can put the screens in there. No. You can advertise a number of different things. You can really grab that customer for 10 hours and he's not doing anything with that. That's the only ongoing business that looks interesting from a business standpoint. The design standpoint, I think he's making all of our lives much better yeah. and we should thank him for that, but that doesn't necessarily mean you want to invest. Unless he does, kind of, a light goes off and he starts thinking about the business. Yeah, I mean, I would love to be sitting. <coughs> I, I usually just put my feet up on the other person's yes. uh, thing and then they get mad. I've seen Definitely. your feet. You've seen my I've feet. I've seen your feet. You've seen yep. them go right up in Right the behind me, right here. <laughs> <laughs>
but uh, congratulations. You are moving to the semifinals for today, and, uh, and congratulations. And I think that whatever happens with you, I think all of us will be a lot happier when we take those long flights when we're in economy. Okay. So